Hi, biologists. We're going to talk just a little bit about regulation of operons today. So I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to look at this PowerPoint. So um, as we talk about uh, operons today, um, we'll be touching on a couple different things, and I think it'll be able, it'll help you check off a couple of these learning goals, including explain the role of DNA binding proteins and how they regulate transcription. Um, we'll be thinking about uh, transacting factors in this case, um, and we'll also be talking about the structure of an operon. So as you uh, likely recall, this is the structure of the LAC operon. We have two different sets of genes over here is the promoter and the gene that codes for the repressor protein. And as we've talked about in other videos, this is um, because this protein travels around the cell and can do its job anywhere, this is a transacting factor. This protein is also uh, called a transcription factor, and I just like to abbreviate it as TF. Um, because it binds to DNA and regulates whether or not transcription can occur here. So you can see this is a repressor protein. When the repressor binds to um, the operator region near the promoter of this other set of genes, that is the LAC operon, it prevents RNA polymerase from being able to get in here and transcribe. Now, when lactose is present, as you know, this regulatory protein is still produced, but its structure changes when it binds um, lactose, the lactose disaccharide. This changes the structure of the protein, so it's no longer able to bind to DNA. Now, RNA polymerase is able to go in and do its job, and we see transcription and then translation of all three of these genes in the lac operon beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase. Terrific. So that's our um, basic LAC operon. Um, we've talked about the transcription factor, the transacting factor of this system. And then this operator region where the transcription factor binds, um, we've also called it a consensus sequence. Um, this consensus sequence is the example of um, a cis acting factor. Um, isn't it convenient that a transcription factor is trans acting and a consensus sequence is cis acting? Uh, and it's cis, that is, it acts locally because it can't travel anywhere, right? This piece of DNA is stuck next to its other DNA friends. Like that's just how DNA works. Whereas a protein like this transcription factor can travel all over the genome all over the cell. Okay, so there's our LAC operon as a foundation. We know that um, expression of these lactose related genes turns on when there's lactose present in the environment. So here's a um, structural model of what scientists believe this LAC I repressor protein looks like when it binds to DNA. Um, you can see it has kind of one, two, three, four DNA binding domains here. Um, and because of the way this protein interacts with DNA, um, scientists believe that there is, um, there's a loop that's formed in the DNA when this repressor is bound to it. And that loop is gonna prevent RNA polymerase um, from making a new transcript. However, this lactose responsive transcription factor is not the only transcription factor that regulates gene expression at the lac operon. There's also a glucose responsive transcription factor. And this transcription factor is also called CAP or CRP. They are um, the same name or different names for the same protein. Um, CAP stands for catabolite activator protein. And CRP stands for cyclic AMP receptor protein. And, and both are accurate. Um, you can see here is a model of the CAP protein interacting with DNA, um, similar to how we saw the lac repressor protein interacting to DNA. But of course, 
different protein, it's going to have a different consensus sequence or a different binding site within the DNA. And uh, you can see that the cat protein here is binding cyclic AMP in red in the middle here. So this is a CAMP or cyclic AMP binding protein as well as a DNA binding protein. So let's talk a little bit about how glucose can affect the transcription of the LAC operon. Okay, so in the absence of cyclic AMP, the cat protein does not bind the promoter. Um, so we do get a little bit of transcription. Let's make maybe one mRNA here. We're making one mRNA. However, when cyclic AMP is present inside the cell, the cap protein plus cyclic AMP can bind to the promoter. Um, and this does a better job of recruiting RNA polymerase. So we have much more active transcription. We're gonna make so many more copies of this RNA at least four copies of the RNA. We're gonna make a lot more copies of the RNA. Terrific. So um, still glucose isn't part of the story yet. How does glucose relate to cyclic AMP levels? We're gonna walk through this diagram here. Um, the, first of all, we need to know that adenylyl or adenylate cyclase is what produces cyclic AMP. So the protein adenylyl cyclase takes ATP and converts it into cyclic AMP. And this is what binds to that glucose bind or glucose regulatory transcription factor, the cap protein that we've been talking about. Okay. Um, and then the amount of cyclic AMP inside the cell is inversely related to the concentration of glucose. What that means is outside the cell, if there are high levels of glucose, we're going to have an inactive form of adenylyl cyclase. So we're not going to be making a lot of this cyclic AMP. If there's no cyclic AMP, the cat protein is not going to bind to the operator, I'm sorry, to the promoter of the LAC operon. So we're going to have very low or infrequent transcription. However, if glucose levels are low, then we're going to have a very active adenylyl cyclase. So we're making so much cyclic AMP. So the cat protein can bind to the DNA, no problem. And that means we end up having a ton of transcription of the genes within the LAC operon. Okay. Just one more thing that I want to talk about to connect this idea of cyclic AMP and glucose. The way this works at, uh, at a more molecular level is that we have glucose transported inside the cell. And normally inside the cell, we have a protein interacting with this glucose transporter. And this protein is called IAA glic, and it's phosphorylated. However, when glucose comes into the cell, this phosphate group is transferred over to glucose. Um, IAA glic inhibits um, lactose being taken up into the cell. So if there's glucose, this actually inhibits lactose being taken up into the cell, but it also influences adenylate cyclase. IAA glic, when it's phosphorylated, activates adenylyl cyclase, also called adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase is that protein that's going to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. So if there's lots of glucose inside the cell, there's going to be very little IAA glic phosphorylated because it'll have donated its phosphate group over here to glucose. That means we won't have any of this activating signal. So we won't be doing any of this conversion activity. High glucose levels is going to mean low cyclic AMP levels because the glucose um, will steal this phosphate group. And so adenylate cyclase won't be stimulated 
to make cyclic AMP. Okay. So let's go back to thinking about the LAC operon here. We want to think about how the LAC operon will uh, produce these different parts of the operon that is will undergo transcription and then translation of LAC Z, LAC Y, and LAC A under different sugar conditions. So if there's no glucose at all, that means we're gonna have high cyclic AMP. And that's gonna mean that the cap protein can bind um, down here um, to turn on the lac operon. However, if there's no lactose around, we're also gonna have um, the lac repressor or lac I bound. So we're gonna have no transcription in this case or very limited transcription. If we have no lactose around, but we have yes glucose around, um, I should erase these old guys. If we have no lactose around and we have yes glucose around, um, we're still going to have that lac repressor sitting on the promoter. But because there is glucose around, we're gonna have low cyclic AMP levels. So in fact, we'd be up here. The cap protein isn't bound to the promoter at all. And also the inhibitor is in place. So we're definitely not going to have transcription of the LAC operon under these conditions. Right, next scenario. What if we have lactose around, but no glucose? This is an important condition because glucose is our preferred, not just our preferred, but E. coli is pretty much everybody's preferred method um, of getting food is breaking down glucose. Um, so glucose is preferred, but there's no glucose present. Instead, there is lactose. So no glucose means we're gonna have cyclic AMP levels that are high. So we're going to have the camp cap complex bound to the promoter. If we have yes lactose, that means that the repressor protein will no longer be bound to the DNA because it's also bound to the lac um, inducer molecule. So we're gonna absolutely have transcription if we have yes lactose, but no glucose. All right, last situation for us to think about. And that is when we have lots of lactose and also lots of glucose. Okay, so if we have uh, lots of glucose, we're gonna have low cyclic AMP. So we're gonna be up here where the cap protein is not binding to DNA. And if we have yes lactose, we're going to have the repressor protein falling off the DNA because it's bound to um, the lactose molecule. Well, this signal is gonna allow RNA polymerase through, but recall that the cap protein is really uh, what does an especially good job of calling RNA polymerase over to start transcription. And no cat protein is going to be, is, is going to mean no transcription or very low transcription. Again, because we have glucose here, the cell would much rather use up the glucose that's present rather than turn on all these new proteins so that we can uh, consume the lactose, we being the E. coli. So if there's glucose around, there's no reason to turn on this um, operon. So we will have no expression if there's glucose present. That is, we won't turn on the lac operon 
if there's glucose present. The only time the lac operon really gets turned on high volume is when we have lactose present in the environment, but no glucose, none of our preferred um, metabolic substrate. All right, so I hope this example helps you think a little bit about how the lac operon is regulated not just by lactose, but also by the presence of glucose in the environment. Bring your questions to class, guys.